And do we have the, is it the Gita one up there? From the Gita. Hare Krishna. Sunday do Jai Radha Madhava or Hare Krishna? Is it possible to get a cup? That's much easier to manage than a bottle. Oh, you have seen that too. Okay, good. And everybody can see the screen? Yes, sir. You can see. No way you can see. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gunja Jaya Radha Madhava Gunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Balaba Kiri Varadari Gopi Gopi Jana Balaba Kiri Varadari Ya Sodanandana Brajujana Ranjana Ya Sodanandana Brajujana Ranjana Ya Munati Ramana Chari Munati Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Bala Bala Kini Vardai Gopi Jana Bala Bala Kini Vardai Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Jayam Vishnupad, Varmaham Sapari, Vraja Pacharya, Asatara Sadashi, Shimad, Divine Grace, AC, Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Maharaj, Prabhupada Ki Jai. His kind founder, Acharya, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai, and Antikoti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai, Namacharya, Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Shikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gogopina Shai Mukunda Radha Kunda Giddy Govardhana Ki Jai Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Jai Mathura Dhamma Ki Jai Navadweep Mayapur Dhamma Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Dhamma Ki Jai Ganga Mai Jamuna Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanande all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Garanga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prastaya Bhutale, Shri Mati Bhakti Vinata Swami Nitinamani, 
Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pacharani Nirvase Sasunyavadi Paskatyade Satarani. Hare Krishna. So everybody understands English? Yes? With it with an American accent you can understand? Sometimes people say they have to translate my English into English with an Indian accent. <laughs> so I will try to speak slowly and simply, and if there's something, so you're translating something, yeah, Russian? Yeah, okay. Uh, if there's something you don't understand, just ask, all right? Or anybody else? Is that a deal? Yes. Yeah? Everybody, deal? Okay, don't just be confused. I don't think you can see either. Can everybody see the screen? Can you see the screen? You can see. So what does Srila Rupa Goswami say is the essence of devotional service? To always what? Always remember Krishna and never forget him. Is this easy or difficult? Very difficult. Even sometimes we have a hard time remembering Krishna when we are chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> but through the day we are busy with so many things. Even we may be busy for things in Krishna's service or we are busy for things with our job or our school or our family. And we are thinking about what we are doing or what we are seeing or hearing or interacting with in the world. And these fill our consciousness. But this is a problem <laughs> because everything What are you doing? They are fine. Everybody's happy. They're, everybody's happy. It's okay. So this is a problem because Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita, yam yam vapi smaram bhavam twajachante kalevaram tam tam eva tikanteya sadatad bhava bhavita that whatever we are thinking about is what we will attain. So for a long time, I was thinking, well, maybe I could be like Grandfather Bhishma. You know, it says, it says at the end of his life, it said that man who fought on thousands of battlefields with thousands of men and spoke on thousands of topics with thousands of meanings withdrew his attention and fixed his wide open eyes on the personality of Godhead who stood before him with glittering garments. And I thought maybe even though my mind is busy in so many thousands of things, somehow I will be able to think of Krishna at the time of death. But as the years went on, I thought, I don't know if that's actually going to work. I think I really have to think of Krishna all the time. So how are we going to do this? Now, some people think that the way to do this, and Arjuna thought like this as well. Arjuna said, forget it. I am not going to fight this battle. Correct? You just want me to do booty yoga? Okay, fine. I will go and beg. I will give up everything, and I'll become a mendicant. Correct? And Krishna was trying to persuade him, and Arjuna couldn't be persuaded. He kept saying, why are you telling me to do these activities when I should do booty yoga? Finally, Krishna says, okay, okay, fine. Go to the mountains, put down deer skin, look at your nose, chant Om, forget about Draupadi and Subhadra, eat the roots and the berries in the forest, and fix your mind on the Agya Chakra, you know. And Arjuna goes, Nah. He says, Chanchalahimana Krishna, I can't do this. 
He says, what happens to the yogis who try to do this and they fail? Who is he thinking about? Himself. And what does Krishna end that chapter with? Yogi nama pisarvesham madgatenantaratmana shradavam bhajateyo mam samayuktatmo mataha Be absorbed in me. But then Krishna is telling him to fight. And it always amazed me that right after this verse, yam yam bhapi saram bhavam, 8.6, the next verse, 8.7, Krishna says, do you know what he says? Mam anusmaram yudya cha. Think of me while you are fighting. So how to do that? So we often think the same way, if I want to really think about Krishna, I have to leave everything, you know, go to Vrindavan, not so far from here, you can easily go, and sit at the bank of the Yamuna. I guess you could sit at the bank of the Yamuna here, but that not so nice. <laughs> so you could sit at the bank of the Yamuna, or maybe you sit at Radhakund, and just chant all day like Haridas Thakur. And we think anything else I do is just nonsense. And we make this difference between I'm going to meditate on Krishna and the things I am doing in my life. One of the biggest questions that I get asked for many, many years is how can I balance my material and spiritual life? And my answer is always stop having a material life. And again, I'm sure in people's heads, they think, oh, quit the university. And we did that in the early days of ISKCON, actually. I left my studies, everything, and I just moved into the ashram. So we did like that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. First class. Mm -hmm. But that's not really what Krishna is recommending. Hmm? Because Krishna wants us to do responsible work for him in this world. And even if you are a full-time preacher renunciate, you are still going to be running around doing so many things, correct? Yes. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells us how we can find him in what we are already thinking about. And this is very beautiful. We're going to take what I am already seeing, what I am already hearing, what I am already smelling and tasting and touching, and we are going to have those things act as what Srila Rupa Goswami calls an udipana, which is part of the category of vibhava. So in order to experience rasa, a relationship with Krishna, there has to be something that stimulates that relationship. And now, wouldn't it be nice if everything did this? Everything you saw and... Yes? So we're thinking, well, when I'm in love with Krishna, that will happen naturally. Premanjana jarita bhakti ulotanena santasa daiva rideyo shivilo kayanti yam shayma sundara chimcha gunasa rupam. So I'll wait for that. Right now, I'll just be in Maya and think of Krishna sometimes, and later, when I become a pure devotee, everything will stimulate my love for Krishna. But it doesn't work like that. Sadhana bhakti, or what Krishna calls in the 12th chapter of the Gita, abhyas yoga, means that we practice. And Srila Rupa Goswami says the essence of bhakti is you practice thinking of Krishna. So what we're going to go through today is, is most of the verses from the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says how he can be understood in the world. We're going to be looking at the 7th, 9th, 10th, and 15th chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. Now, as we go through this, if possible, if you can take some notes, because I want everyone to pick at least one maybe two, maybe three things that you're going to especially meditate on 
this week. So have you all been able to understand me? Yes? English is okay? Yes? Accent is okay? All right, very good. So you ready to go on this journey? All right, and I'm going to be asking you at the end, what did you pick? So we're going to start with chapter 7 of the Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna says that he is Om. And he says this actually three times. Hmm? So Om is what created the whole material world. And even the scientists tell us that solid matter, it's still moving. The molecules, the atoms are moving. Moving means it's making some sound. Actually, everywhere is Om. Now, not only that, Krishna tells us he is all the sounds. And there's one lecture where Prabhupada says, if you don't like to chant Hare Krishna, you can find God in all the sounds. It's a little challenging. How is Krishna in the sound of the fan? So I like this one. I like to meditate on this one because it's always a little bit of a challenge. How is this sound Krishna? How is this sound Krishna? How is this sound Krishna? And I am the seed. So Krishna also says this three times. So bhakti is like a seed. The guru plants the seed of bhakti in the heart and it gradually grows until it develops the fruit of love of God. And proper relationships and desires. When we see a family where the husband and wife, they are loving and kind with each other, and they are raising their children properly, there is Krishna. And the strength of the strong without passion and desire. When we are using our strength to help and protect others, or we see other people using their strength to protect others. Okay? That is Krishna. And the heat in fire, can we become aware of the heat in this room? Hmm? No, there's still heat, Prabhu. If there was no heat, we would all die. And it's still pretty hot, even with the air conditioning, where you have a door open. Can you feel the heat? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So one scientist said that the whole universe is a cold, impersonal machine. And it really broke my heart. When we feel the heat, we know that God is alive and loving. And the fragrance of the earth Srila Prabhupada talking about this, he said that even if you do not read Shastra and you do not have Guru, you can find God in the fragrance of a flower. And how is it that the same sun, the same earth, the same water is producing such a variety of fragrance? The penances of ascetics. So what is penance? Penance means you have done something wrong and you put things back into balance. So the most basic penance is a real heartfelt apology. Is this easy or difficult? Huh? Very difficult. So I read on social media one devotee, he wrote, my seniors told me to apologize. So if any of you are so sensitive that you felt offended by me, I am very sorry for that. To actually apologize, to take responsibility, requires that we put aside our ego. And whenever we put things back into balance, there is Krishna the life of all that lives. Can we become aware that we are alive? 
Can you feel I am alive? I am full of life. And now become aware that everyone else in this room is also full of life. Actually, the whole world is like this, full of life. And that is Krishna. So the, our intelligence, you know when we do something intelligent, we all do something intelligent, at least sometimes. And when we do something intelligent, we feel very happy. Oh, I just did something so smart. Yes, correct? That feeling you get, ah, oh, I did something very smart. That is Krishna. The prowess of powerful men, people using their strength and energy. And the light of the sun, Krishna also says this three times. So can we become aware of the sunlight in this room? This whole room is full of sunlight. Actually, it's full of little particles, Prabhupada would always say, of sun. And often we take the sun for granted. We just think, oh, here's the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but giving us strength and energy and courage. Huh? And the light of the moon, the beautiful moon, like a pearl in the sky and our ability this is also a very easy one to meditate on so I'd like us right now to become aware what abilities am I using I have the ability to sit up I have the ability to see to understand try moving your hand you have that ability how do you doing this Krishna is that ability. If Krishna wants you not to be able to move your hand, you'll not be able to do it. So at every moment we can be aware, what ability am I using? What ability are others using? And that is Krishna. This is one that Srila Prabhupada speaks about a lot. Rasoham Absukonteya. Of course, Prabhupada says this is not only water, but any liquid. And when, when you are hot, you are working hard, you are perspiring, you are sweating, and you take some nice water, and you're like, oh, Krishna is the taste of water. Now we're going to go on to chapter 9 of the Bhagavad Gita. Here Krishna says, I am the ritual, the kratu. So in our Hare Krishna movement, by the way, I have a special surprise at the end for anybody who stays, but anyway, Hare Krishna. So in our Hare Krishna movement, we have so many rituals. Of course, even in daily life, we have so many rituals. Like I go to my oldest son's house, and he doesn't put his wooden utensils in the dishwashing machine, and the plates go over here, and the cups go over here, and then at our younger son's house, he does put the wooden utensils in the dishwashing machine, and the plates go over here. And these different rituals, indicate their different desires. So these different rituals we have are the desires of Krishna. And Krishna and his desires are the same. Not only is he the rituals, he is the yajna. Yajna is made up of rituals. Yajna means a ceremony to connect with the divine. And we also, in our regular life, we have so many ceremonies to connect with people. Like if I want to call my daughter in America, I have to have a phone, and it has to be charged, and it has to be on the network, and I have to put in the correct number, and it has to be the correct time. I think now it's four in the morning for her. Huh? If I call her at one in the morning, I will not make a good connection. <laughs> so these yagyas also are like that. You have to do them exactly properly. Otherwise, a demon comes out of the fire, yeah? So these ceremonies to connect with Krishna, they are also how Krishna wants us to connect with him. Like some people, they want to use WhatsApp. Other people, they want to use Telegram. Some people, they want you to call. So Krishna has his ways of connecting. And the offering to the ancestors. So Krishna very much wants us to respect 
the elders in our family, and our proper traditions. And when we do that, he is present. And the healing herb, so I have here some nice herbal tea. And that ability, when we are feeling sick, and we take some healing herb, of course, even modern pharmaceuticals, they are mostly derived from plants or synthesized plants. And when we feel better, that ability to have us feel better is Krishna. So Krishna is all the sounds, but he is especially the sounds of his own name and from the Vedic literatures. So not only is he the ritual and the yajna, but he is all the ingredients of the yajna. And every religion recognizes that God is the father. Hmm? So all of us have a father, I hope you all have a good relationship with your father. <laughs> uh, many of you are fathers, yes? And every day we are seeing so many fathers. And if we think about the ideal father who makes sure that the children get an education and get provided for and have nice things to play with and good friends and good food and all facility for their life, and you take that ideal father and you multiply that billions of times, we have some idea of how loving is Krishna. And he says, I'm the mother. So our bodies grow inside the body of our mother. They are nourished and fed from the body of our mother. In the same way, we are actually inside the body of God. When Mother Yasoda looked in Krishna's mouth, she sees everyone, and Lord Brahma in his prayers in the 14th chapter of the 10th canto, he says, when Mother Yasoda looked in your mouth, she saw me, Lord Brahma, inside. He said, how am I talking to you outside? <laughs> Actually, we are within his body and nourished by his body. And just like a mother particularly loves the children, even if the children go bad, even the child becomes a criminal and is in prison, the mother still has affection. So Krishna, like an incredible mother, still loves us no matter how fallen or sinful we become. I am the support. So we have so many supports in our life. How do you support yourself? We talk about our job or our house supports us, our education, our talents. Maybe our parents are supporting us. Huh? But everything in this world that supports us can crumble. But Krishna is always there as a support, and he never crumbles. I am the grandfather. So often when they do a yajna and they're saying what family you're in, they say you're in Krishna's family, you're in a chuta gotra. And like this loving grandfather, Krishna is so affectionate. And the object of knowledge. So I was once reading this scientist who said that when he studied a little bit of science, he became an atheist. And when he studied a lot of science, he became a theist. Actually, anything that we study in depth will bring us to the glory of Krishna, will show us the intelligence, the creativity, the artistry, and the amazing vision of Krishna. The purifier, so we do many things to become purified. We may take a special diet, we may do exercise, right? have some health treatment, we take a shower, we brush our teeth, we wash our clothes, we clean our house, maybe we see a counselor. But the ability of all of these things to purify us comes from Krishna. Without Krishna giving that purifying ability, nothing else can purify us. Oh, again he says, he is Om. So we think this is very simple, just one syllable, Om. How can this be God? And Lord Brahma made this mistake with little Krishna. <laughs> he saw little Krishna and he says, oh, just little boy has some food in his left hand wandering around the Vrindavan forest. I am the goal. Prabhupada says that if our mind is not settled, it is because we do not have a clear goal. 
when we are setting our goals, working to achieve them and achieve them, uh, then we can find Krishna. And sustainer, what sustains us? The air, the temperature, water, our food, emotionally, our family, our friends, our society. Uh, but actually, it is Krishna's energy working through those that sustain us. So I am the master. Sometimes we don't like this idea very much. Oh, Krishna's the master. <laughs> I mean, we all say in the Hare Krishna movement, I am a servant. But, you know, being a servant is not a very popular occupation. <laughs> but when you have a very good master, actually we're very happy. Who here has ever had a really good boss? Who's ever had a really good boss? It's always a tiny minority of people. <laughs> so, twice in my life I had a really good boss. Uh, briefly each time. <laughs> and when you have a good boss, then you have no anxiety. So I'll tell you a little story. So nice not to have a translated class and then I can say everything I want to say. So <laughs> I was reading this from one Christian writer where he was saying that he was driving his wife and two little children, three and five years old. And so they get in the car and first they stop at a shop and they're waiting in the car. Wife gets out, she purchases some things, gets back in the car. Then they go to a petrol station. And at least in America, you put in your own petrol. So then he gets out and he puts the petrol in the car, gets back in the car. Then they stop at a friend's house. His wife gets out of the car, sees the friend, gets back in the car. And then they are on the big highway and he was going too fast. And so zoom, 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 zoom. And the police come and give him a ticket. And then they're driving and then his three-year-old daughter says, Daddy, where are we going? And he said he was thinking, we have been in this car for 45 minutes. Stopping this place, mother gets out. Stopping this place, father gets out. Stopping this place, mother gets out. Stopping this place, some strange man comes to the window and lights are going. And she's just sitting in the car. And she's peaceful. She doesn't know what is happening. She doesn't know where they are going. But what does she know? Who is driving? Krishna is the master. He is the witness. So sometimes we are a little frightened by this one. Oh, Krishna is watching me. But no, not like that. It's that Krishna actually cares. So you can do this experiment. You can try going to someone who loves you and say, I would like to talk to you for two hours about everything I did today. Will that work? No. After five minutes, they will, their mind will wander. But Krishna cares about everything we think, everything we do, everything we desire, not only in this life, but in all of our lives. I am the abode. So how do we feel when we go home, right? Now I can just be myself. Actually, Krishna is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And everywhere we can be ourselves authentically with him. And the refuge so many places, Srila Prabhupada says that Krishna is like an umbrella. So when you take out your umbrella for the rain, of course now that's over, yeah? But if you take your umbrella for the rain or the sun, you can remember Krishna is the refuge. And the most dear friend. So I hope all of us have a friend, at least one. And you have a feeling of equality and a sense that I am there for you and you are there for me. And we can share with each other. And you take that feeling of friendship and you can multiply it to infinity to have some idea what is Krishna. Creation, 
and annihilation. So we are fascinated by creation and we are fascinated by destruction. Just like little children, they build a tower, yes? And then what do they do? Right? So I was uh, reading about this one woman and the way she makes her money is she builds towers out of blocks like dominoes, you know, and then she hits one and they go down in some special way and people pay her money for her to construct these so that she can destroy them. <laughs> Interesting way to make your livelihood. But we are very fascinated by both creation and destruction because they are both Krishna. The basis of everything, so secularism, to have a secular view means that you don't see the relationship of God to your life or to the world. You tell the story of your life or you tell the story of the world without a relationship with God. But actually everything, our happiness, our sorrows, our clarity, our confusion, the good times, the bad times, everything that we go through, the basis of everything is Krishna. I really liked this one and I really liked getting the pictures for this one. And this is something I think about whenever I lie down at night to go to sleep or if ever I am walking and I am tired. Ah, Krishna is the resting place. And sometimes our lives become very hectic and very stressed and very crazy. And again we can then stop. Ah, Krishna, let me rest in you. And again he says he is the seed. So the seed is the most concentrated form of the energy of the plant. And therefore the main food of almost all human societies is seeds. Right? R rice, wheat, now I see in India you're eating a lot of millet, that is also a seed. <laughs> yeah, Oats, barley, rye, uh, even our beans, our pulses, our dolls, they're all seeds. Many of our spices are seeds. And so every day when we are eating these seeds, uh, Krishna is this concentrated energy. I give heat. So when we are cooking, the heat makes the molecules in the food dense. Yes? That is why your clothes dry in the sunshine also. Did you know that? The heat from the sun, it makes the water molecules dense and they dance off your clothes into the air. And when we are cooking, not only are the food molecules dancing, but the various flavors and juices of the foods are released. So when we see Krishna, we start to dance and our various flavors are also released. So I withhold and send forth the rain. So sometimes you see a rain cloud in the distance and you can see over here it is raining and over here it is not raining. When I was a child we were driving on the road and on the side we were on it was raining and right down the line, right down the middle, the other side was not raining. Yeah. Uh, immortality and also death. So we are all afraid of death. Why are we afraid of death? Hmm? hmm? Ah, because he says it is not natural to die. That is true. But what is it that dies? At death what dies is the identity that we have worked on in this life. Do you understand? And we have put a lot of energy into that. You know you can put money into someone else's bank account. You know that, right? If you have the proper number. So suppose you thought you were putting money into your bank account but you had one number wrong and you were putting actually into someone else's account. That is what we are doing in materialistic life. We are putting our energy into an identity that is not actually us. 
And the way that we think of ourselves, who am I? I am this person's child, I am this person's spouse, I am this person's parent, I have this occupation, I have this particular thing that I do, I have this particular personality, I have this knowledge, I have these talents. It is all false. And we are putting our energy into that. And death means all of that finished. So it is very frightening. But actually it is Krishna moving us on to the next proper phase. And not only is Krishna death, but he is also immortality. And we are immortal. If we really want to see Krishna in death and immortality, my dear friends, we need to be putting our money into the right bank account. We need to be putting money into the account of ourselves, the soul. Then death is nothing. Then death is like changing one's clothes only. Okay, going on to chapter 10. I think some people think these verses are only in chapter 10. We have been going chapter 7, chapter 9 so far. Now we are in chapter 10. So Krishna says he's the beginning, middle, and end. Our childhood, our middle age, our old age. Oh, again, he says, he is the light of the sun. So you know everything we eat is a transformation of sunlight. Isn't that amazing? All the food we eat, it is the plants are eating the sun and turning it into food and everything. I mean, this wood here, it was a tree, and the tree was eating the sun, and now it's a table. But this was just sunlight. Amazing. And among the stars, I am the moon. Seeing the moon surrounded by stars, we can think of Krishna having a picnic with his cowherd boyfriends or dancing with his gopis. The god of thunder and lightning, the chief of the devas. So even the modern scientists, they don't know what causes thunder and lightning because it's a person. The mind. So for we yogis, we may think of the mind mostly as a problem. Yeah? But it is the control center of the senses. And Srila Prabhupada says that whatever we think and feel and desire, it cannot be outside of the energy of Krishna. When we realize that, then we can intentionally do what we're practicing right now and find Krishna in his energy and that way realize that our mind can also be our friend. He is the living force or consciousness. Can we all become aware that we are aware? Become aware that I know where my fingers are. We are aware of where our toes are. We are aware of where is our nose. Even if we close our eyes, we have a sense of how much space is around us, in front of us, behind us, in the room. We are full of awareness. And every other person in this room is also full of awareness. When we go out in the world, the trees, the plants, the birds, the insects, the animals, everything is aware, and that is Krishna. Of the Rudras, I am Shiva. So Shiva is a very unusual personality. Prabhupada said whenever there's natural disasters, uh, there is Shiva, the destroyer. But he's also the greatest Vaishnava. But he has a difficult task. Just like I have one god brother, he's now retired. But his job was, he was the physician, he was the doctor, in the maximum security prison for the criminally insane. You all understand? I'm getting some blank looks. You understand? Yes? Okay. That's Lord Shiva's job. Yes. 
Somebody has to do it. So he is Meru, the amazing, unbelievable. And the ocean, the ocean is unimaginably deep, unimaginably large, and it looks very simple, but it's full of life. And Krishna is also like this, unimaginably deep and broad and looking simple, but full of life and pastimes. And again, he says he is Om. So Srila Jiva Goswami says that Krishna is the A, uh, Srimati Radharani is the U, uh, and we Jivas, we are the M, um, the Anushwar. So Krishna says that he is all Yagyas, all ceremonies to connect with him, but especially he is the chanting of the holy name because we were saying with the other ceremonies, you have to get them exactly right, right time, so forth. But with chanting, you can chant anywhere, any, any way at all. You can chant silently in your mind, quietly, very quietly, loudly, by yourself, in a group, in a temple, in your home, on a bus, on the street, in the toilet room, anywhere you can chant Hare Krishna. He is the Himalayas that do not move. And similarly, Krishna's love and affection for us does not move. And here in Delhi, you have so many banyan trees. But most of them you don't let get very big, right? But I'm sure you have all seen the big ones, yeah? Everybody has seen the great big banyan trees? Where you cannot tell where they begin, where they end? And he is the king. So even in 2023, people are very fascinated by royalty. Like when uh, King Charles was coronated, so many people, I mean, not me, but so many people were so interested. So how interesting must be Krishna. And he is the lightning. So sometimes we have doubt or confusion or difficulty or sadness or pain or grief. And then all of a sudden we understand, oh, that's what I should do that lightning that comes in our mind and destroys our confusion and doubt is Krishna. And he is the surabhi cow that can give unlimited milk and anything one desires. Krishna is fulfilling all of the desires of the living entities. And there are many reasons that people have children, but Krishna says of all of them, he is this love between the husband and the wife. So Krishna is Yamaraj. So sometimes we become bewildered. We see that good people seem to suffer, bad people seem to enjoy. But behind everything is Yamaraj and everything is perfectly fair. Among subduers I am time. So we might try to use time, to beat time, to save time. <laughs> but it is better to accept time. Because everything we have is going to be destroyed by time. Everything. Huge civilizations go to dust. But if we accept and we connect with Krishna in this moment, 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 we will not be disturbed by the subduing portion of time. He is the lion. The lion roars and the animals run away. When Krishna speaks in the Shastra, the demons, the atheists, they run away. He is the wind. So when we hang our clothes in the wind, then they smell very nice, yes? and you have some room that's musty, moldy, and you open the windows and the wind comes in and purifies. And Parasuram, who destroys corruption in leaders. Whenever there is anybody destroying corruption in leadership and in government, that represents Parasuram. And he is the Makara. So there is no English word for Makara. So Prabhupada would say shark, or dolphin or crocodile, the great beasts of the sea. And he is the Ganga, the spiritual water that comes from beyond the universe, 
from his toe of Vamandev, Padanakanir Adanita Janapavana. The beginning, the middle and end of things. The beginning of our journey when we arrive, when we go home. The top of our sandwich, the middle, the bottom. Beginning, middle, end of everything. Oh, he is the science of the self. Who is the self? What does Krishna say about the self? Does anyone know Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse 20? What does Krishna say? When we find the self, how will we feel? Anybody know? Hmm? Joyful. He says we will relish. We'll see ourselves and we'll say, Wow, I am awesome. That's what he says. He says you'll relish and rejoice in the self. And you'll think, there is nothing higher than this. And one will never be disturbed, even in the greatest difficulty. And we learn from Srila Rupa Goswami that we have the qualities of Krishna in a small degree, but we're very small, so that's okay. We're beautiful, we're youthful, we're geniuses. To know our real self. Today people talk about loving yourself, but they usually talk about the self as the body. And that's a little challenging, yeah? But to know our real self, Ah, that is Krishna. And he is Vada. Vada means when there is a discussion and the purpose is to know truth. No ego. You just want to find truth. Then there is Jalpa. Jalpa is you want to win. I was having one long discussion with one devotee and I said, what do you want? She said, Ormila, I want you to say that I am right. <laughs> That's Jalpa. Then Vitanda is you're not trying for truth, you're not trying to be right, you just want to make the other person wrong. Hmm? So Krishna is Vada. And he is Ah. Ah, the basic sound with no tongue, no lips, no teeth. That is the basis of all language. An inexhaustible time. Good times come, the good times go. Right? But through all these changes, there is Krishna. And the death of everything, not only the death of this body and this identity, the death of a job, the death of our education, the death of a relationship, the death of a residence, the death of a project, the death of an idea. Hmm? But Prabhupada talks about the difference between the cat holding the kitten in the mouth and the cat holding the rat in the mouth. The kitten is feeling comfort and the rat is feeling fear. When all of these things get destroyed, we know this is Krishna coming to take me to something better. Oh, I like this one. This is the start before the start. So, you know, sometimes we start something. We start a relationship or a job or a project and then we realize, you know, this actually started before. It started when I met that person. It started when I went to that place. It started when I read that thing. You have this experience? But at the time you didn't know it was the start. So this is Krishna, the start before the start. And here we are at 10.34 in the Gita. Among women I am fame. So there are many famous women. Uh, Sita, Gandhari, Draupadi. When women are famous for their dharma, that is Krishna. The fortune of women, the beauty of women. Sri means fortune, beauty, charisma. That is Krishna. A one devotee recently said to me, why do women talk so much? And I said to him, actually, Prabhu, the research is men talk more in public and women talk more in private. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Sudarshan Chakra is called the master of speech in Bhagavatam 957. There's no way you can see from there, Prabhu. 
I mean, it's nice that you're comfortable, but then you cannot see. Can you put your chair, can someone have maybe help him put his chair in the back so that he can see? Yes, thank you. Uh, so the Sudarshan Chakra, as the master of speech, it illuminates, the chair is not that interesting, everybody. It illuminates, it purifies, it destroys ignorance. And when women are speaking like that as a representative of Sudarshan, that is Krishna. The memory of women, the women, actually Prabhupada says if you can read a lot of books and remember what they are about, and the research shows that women are particularly good in this, and that is Krishna. And Medha. So what is the famous verse about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that has the word Medha? Krishna? Yeah. Su Medha Saha. So Su means, of course, very good or beautiful. So those who have good or beautiful intelligence, they engage in Sankirtana. And Srila Prabhupada says in teachings of Kun Queen Kunti, verse 3, that sociologically, usually women outnumber men in religious gatherings. Here I think we have about 50-50. <laughs> but he said it's because that women have a natural intelligence to accept the authority of God. Yes? So this natural intelligence of women to accept the Lord and join in the Sankirtan movement, that is Krishna. And the steadfastness of women, when women are chaste and faithful, that is Krishna. And patience. So how many of you ladies are mothers? How many mothers do we have here? Mothers, mothers, mothers. How many mothers? How many mothers? That's all. How many of you women are mothers? How many women have children here? Not. If they don't understand English, what have they been doing this whole time? I don't know. Okay. Do you have to be patient with your children? Yes. Otherwise, you will go crazy. Yes? Okay. Now, the, you men, you don't listen to this. Do you have to be patient with your husbands also? Mm -hmm. So that's Krishna. Of poetry, I am the Gayatri. So those of us who chant the Gayatri, that is God in the form of a poem. And November, December, so this is the harvest season. So what is our Gaudiya Vaishnava Harvest Festival? Govardhan Puja, yes. And then Krishna says he is the spring. So the cold winter here in Delhi, it gets very cold in the winter, yeah? And very cold and dark. <laughs> and then we have the warmth of the spring and the flowers and the new growth of things, yes? The, it is the season of, of youth. Krishna is ever youthful. And he says he is gambling. This is very strange. Of all kinds of cheating, he is gambling. So why is this? So usually in cheating, you don't know you are being cheated until later. You think, oh, this is a very nice person, and then later you see your bank account is empty. <laughs> But with gambling, you know. It's, it's open. Let us sit down and you put all your money and I put all my money and I will try to cheat you and you will try to cheat me. Very strange kind of cheating. Of the splendid, I am the splendor. Splendor is the wow of anything. The adbutta. So when Srila Rupa Goswami is analyzing rasa, he says that in order to have rasa in anything, there has to be some wow, or else there's no rasa. So in anything we are enjoying, that wow is Krishna. And I am victory, that feeling of victoriousness. And adventure. Actually, if we see, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur talks about this, how if we see our life as an adventure, that we see even in this world, that this world is part of Krishna's lila, then he said, we will always feel exaltation. That's a complicated English word. 
we will always feel, as Prabhupada said, uh, a thrill at every moment. To see our life as part of Krishna's adventure. In adventures, do you always know how it will end? No. Are there sometimes some difficulties? Yes. Yeah. The strength of the strong. So Krishna already said he is strength used to protect others, but now he's saying he's all strength. So there was a very nice conversation between Prahlad Maharaj and Hiranyakashipu on this point. Does anyone know what Hiranyakashipu asked Prahlad about strength? Hmm? Yes. Where do you get your superhuman powers from, Prahlad? And what did Prahlad say? What did Prahlad say? Yes, from the same place you're getting your powers from, Father, from Krishna. <laughs> So he is the punishment of the criminals. Uh, when we see that criminals are punished and we feel safe, that is Krishna. Now this is interesting. We all have things in life, battles in life that we lose. Correct? But sometimes we are losing a battle in life, but we kept our principles we kept our ideals, we kept our morals, we kept our ethics. Yes, you've had experience of this? You lost, but you, you kept your morality. And don't you feel some victory in that? Yeah? Of secret things I am silence. So we're at now 1038. And Prabhupada writes here in this purport, among the confidential activities of hearing, thinking, and meditating, silence is most important because by silence, one can make progress very quickly. So often we are busy talking to Krishna. Sometimes we should be in silence to hear him. Not only is he intelligence, but he is wisdom, which is a little deeper and broader when we get some deep understanding and deep realization, that is Krishna. And third time he says he's the seed. Here he says he's the seed of everything. He's the seed of our education. He's the seed of our projects, of our ideas, of our relationships. Everything, that beginning seed. And this is something I really like to meditate on. Because in this world, there are so many wonderful, beautiful, amazing things. And this world is just a tiny, tiny planet in the whole universe. So how many wonderful, amazing things must there be? And all of them put together are only the tiniest, tiniest part of Krishna. How amazing Krishna must be. Now going on to Bhagavad Gita chapter 15. Here he says he's the splendor of the sun, the beauty of the sunrise, the beauty of the sunset, the beauty at noon, the splendor of the moon reflecting on the water like diamonds, hanging like a pearl in the sky, the splendor of fire. You like to watch fire dancing? Yeah? Keeping the planets in orbit this earth is moving. Can you feel it moving? I don't feel it moving, do you? We came here in a car. I could feel the car was moving. Yeah. How amazing of a driver Krishna is. We don't feel it. He's giving all of the flavor to all the vegetables. What a nice thing to meditate on when we're taking prasadam. And he's the fire of digestion. Every day we're eating. This is a very easy way to remember Krishna. Sometimes we just eat. But eating is a miracle, my dear friends. It's a miracle. 
So probably yesterday you all had some rice, I would think, yeah? Now what is that rice now? It is your nose. You understand? How did the rice turn into your nose? That's the fire of digestion. That's amazing. And not only is he the fire of digestion, but he's moving the food from our mouth to our esophagus, to our stomach, to our small intestines, throughout our body, to our large intestine. How much he is caring for us. So now we are at Bhagavad Gita 15, 15. So this is one of my family's favorite verses. So whenever anybody lost something, we would say, chant 15-15. Sarvastya chaham riti san navisto matas matir po anam cha. I can't find my keys. Chant 15-15. Matas matir po anam cha. Oh, I found my keys. So one time when I was traveling, one devotee said to me, Urmila, I can't find my phone. I said, well, just chant 15-15. And she started walking around the room saying, 15, 15, 15, 15. <laughs> okay, now I said I had a special surprise for any of you who stayed till the end. And I can't see the screen, so you're going to have to tell me uh, if it's... Okay. Do you see the little cone in the black screen? Yes. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Where am I? Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can turn off some lights. Can we turn off some lights?
So that uh, music is by that music is by Mahatma, and the video is by Narada. Uh, you can find that on Mahatma's YouTube channel. I am. So I hope you like that. So I want to now ask for some volunteers if you could say one thing from this presentation that you're going to meditate on in the next week. Yes. I'm the ability in man. Ability in man. Okay. Yes. Yes. Witness. Taste of water. Oh, the penance. The penance is beautiful. Yes. Light of the sun. Fragrance. Time. Yes. Wisdom. Wisdom. Excellent. Yes. Lightning. Oh, of weapons. The thunderbolt. Excellent. Yes. Huh? Resting. Oh, I love that one. Yes. Taste of water. Yes. The spark. That, this, that everything is just a spark. Of his, I love doing that. Yes. Huh? Oh, poetry of Gayatri. Yes. Intelligence of the intelligent. Yes. Witness. Yes. Seed of everything when you eat your japati. Yes. Huh? Adventure. Oh, I like that one. Yes. Huh? Heat and fire. Excellent. Yes. Silence. Hard to find in Delhi. Yes. Fire digestion, very good, yes. What? Everything's coming from Krishna. Okay, good to be specific. Yes. Strength of the strong, excellent, yes. Spring, yes. Fragrance, yes. Ritual, very nice. Yes. Beginning, middle, end. Yes. Master. So I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, if you'd like to go deeper into this, so we have this book. Maybe some of you know Nadia Mani. She's a famous kirtanir. So she has illustrated um, this book. And it is a series of five-minute meditations of what we have discussed. Here is the taste of water, the splendor of the sun. Yes, and we also have, actually, uh, from the Bhagavatam, how to find God also in the universe. 